We have Spider-Man 2 coming to PC tomorrow as of the time of filming this. And it is confirmed to have all the various PC features that you would want, ultra-wide support, all of the various upscalers, frame generation, all of that. This is a Nixies port and they tend to do an excellent job. We have the official PC system requirements and we're gonna talk about those. Uh, but also I thought it'd be interesting to maybe take a look back at the last Spider-Man game for PC, Spider-Man Remastered, its system requirements, and then maybe look at is this more demanding and the answer is definitely yes but I would also say that this generally looks like a master class in scalability because it is absolutely fine with me if the maximum settings require an RTX 4090 possibly with upscaling enabled as long as it also scales down from there and can look appropriate at all of the various settings so some of the arguments I see online of people complaining games are unoptimized because at the absolute highest settings, they challenge incredibly expensive PCs. I would actually argue that that is the opposite. I want optimizations for scalability, including offering extremely high-end settings to challenge and take advantage of the highest-end current hardware and also mid-range hardware of the future. It'll give the game a long lifespan in terms of what it can do. So the minimum to play the game, now granted that's only at 720p 30fps at very low settings, is a GeForce GTX 1650 or a Radeon RX 5500 XT. That's not asking a ton. It's also older CPUs like a Intel Core i3 8100 or AMD Ryzen 3 3100, 16 gigabytes of system RAM, although they do require an SSD and 140 gigabyte minimum. Uh, of, of space on that. So a lot of storage space and an SSD, but other than that, I would say pretty modest specs. Although again, 720p 30 at very low settings. Now let's talk about upscaling for a minute because Nixies always includes the various upscalers you would want, FSR, XESS, DLSS. They usually update to the latest versions available. But sometimes I've noticed in their system requirements charts that there's kind of an implied use of their dynamic resolution scaler, not heavily. I don't want to super criticize it, but in some of their other PC ports, it's been the case that to uh, get a consistent you know, 60 FPS when they're claiming 60 FPS. It oftentimes isn't quite there uh, without the use of that dynamic resolution scaling. Although I'll say it's nice that they offer the dynamic resolution scaling, and that's a great way if your PC is often, but not always, at your frame rate target to kind of just uh, uh, smooth out those dips. This is the way consoles generally work, but unlike some games that force this type of behavior, uh, this, th this game shouldn't. Uh, think about things like Final Fantasy VII Remake, where it kind of forced you into dynamic uh, resolution scaling without even telling you, and Rebirth got a little better about that, but still has these kind of somewhat arbitrary frame rate cap numbers and things like that. Anyway. Uh, to go to recommended settings for 1080p 60 at medium settings, they're asking for an RTX 3060 or an RX 5700. Uh, note that that's a pretty big step up from the minimums. A bit of a lighter colored background here as I move to a very helpful uh, screen, which is the um, Tech Power Up's relative performance chart. If you don't, if your GPU isn't on this list or you're not sure quite where it stacks up. Um, this is an amazing uh, uh, resource for you. It will be linked in the video description. You can click on any GPU. It sets it as a 100% performance baseline, and then you can see how other GPUs stack up from there. Now, sometimes there's a little more to it than that because sometimes you need a certain GPU feature set. Uh, you know, some games require ray tracing support or mesh shaders or things like that. And some games also require a certain amount of VRAM in order to function. Uh, and this chart won't necessarily take uh, that into account. Although I just noticed it's, it's the 1650, not even the 1650 Super I just clicked on. So we can actually go back even further. The 1650, guys, this thing is not a performance monster. So you don't need a lot to play the game. 1650, um, that's weaker than something like a GTX 970. Um, so again, they're not asking for a lot. If you have a GTX 1060 6 gigabyte, uh, you are 27% ahead of the minimum spec. That being said, to jump up to the recommended specs, again, you might see your GPU pass through along the way, you'd be somewhere in between 720p 30 and 1080p 60, very low to medium, uh, right? You're somewhere in between. There's a lot in between here. This is what I mean about scalability. 
Uh, then we get to the, uh, there it was, the 3060 right here. That's a pretty huge amount of scaling, but it makes sense because we're going from 30 to 60, increasing resolution and graphic settings. So that all seems to totally match up for what they're asking for here. Um, also, is the RX 5700 generally a match for that 3060? And the answer is, yeah, a little bit weaker, but within the same ballpark. So I think that's totally reasonable to pair those together. Other GPUs in this general class would be an RTX 2070, 5700 XT, 2060 Super, uh, uh, ARC A750, although sometimes Intel GPUs perform a little weird in certain games, so we'll have to see how that goes for this one. Also notice that to go up to 60 FPS, they're gonna want uh, a few more cores on your CPU, jumping from an i3-8100 to an i5-8400, so same generation, but jumping to the i5, getting some more cores, and again, going from the Ryzen 3 3100 to the Ryzen 5 3600. Now, for uh, increasing to high settings and jumping resolution to 1440p, they're asking us to go from a 3060 uh, to a 3070. Not a massive jump there, but also not super small. So a 3060 to a 3070, and again, you can spot some GPUs in between. Um, is jumping up about 50% of performance. Um, the 3070 is somewhere along the uh, performance level of a 4060 Ti, a 2080 Ti. Uh, uh, the 7700 XT is a bit better. 6700 XT is a bit lower, but in the same general ballpark. So that's what we're uh, kind of looking at for 1440p, 60 FPS at high settings. I'd say that those are pretty reasonable GPUs. That also means if you're on something like a 4060, um, you're gonna be kind of in between. So maybe we're looking at more like 1440p medium rather than the high settings or using uh, upscaling a little more aggressively. Uh, notice that there's also a whole bunch of ray tracing options here as well. Uh, for 1440p 60 high settings, but with ray tracing at high. So I like here, because unlike a lot of games, they're basically taking the non-RT setting that we just saw and just adding ray tracing on top of it. In order to do that, they're asking for a, a 4070 instead of a 3070 or a 7900 XT, which while it's generally faster than a 4070 if we're not ray tracing, if we are talking ray tracing, it falls back a bit in its relative performance, and I think that actually does sound like a reasonable pairing here. So in other words, to kick on ray tracing, our performance, if we set the 3070 as our baseline from if we're doing 1440p high without ray tracing, uh, they're saying that we wanna jump up to a 4070, which is about 22% more performance uh, that they're asking for there. It's actually not uh, super, super crazy. Now, um, they're also stepping up the CPU requirement here, and uh, they actually did that for the high settings at 1440p as well, uh, jumping up to a Core i5-11400, Ryzen 5 5600, and then asking for just a little bit more with an 11600K and 5600X uh, if you kick on ray tracing. And actually, ray tracing does usually increase CPU load, and it did in the previous Spider-Man games. Uh, computing the BVH structure, for example, can have a CPU burden. Um, so that is something to keep in mind there. Now, if they turn the ray tracing from high to very high, but otherwise stay at 1440p 60 high settings, again, I like how they are laying out this chart. This is a masterclass in how to deliver these types of performance charts. Thank you so much, Nixies. Um, uh, we're now jumping up from a 4070 to a 4080 or from a 7900 XT to a 7900 XTX uh, to get that bit of extra uh, performance there. So how much more performance is that? So if we set the 4070 as the baseline and look at how much more powerful is a 4080, uh, well, we're going up about 58% in performance. So it is looking like there's probably a lot of, uh, of increased demand between the lower ray tracing settings. I mean, they're calling it ray tracing high, but we don't know if there's even one called ray tracing low, uh, going up to very high. And then when they go up to ray tracing ultimate, they are now asking for an RTX 4090, but they're also going up to 4K 60. Um, and again, I'm curious whether any resolution scaling will be needed here in order to hit that figure, because sometimes with heavy ray tracing workloads, even the 4090 gets challenged at a, at a native 4K resolution. So that's a bit of a question mark in my mind there, and again, that is moving up to 4K. 
So that's where we're at here. And they're also increasing the CPU burden here as well as well as the system RAM. So I don't know if this mode is just insane for the uh, ray tracing ultimate. Uh, is this something more in line of path tracing type stuff? Uh, and, and it really justifies that or not. We'll have to kind of see what happens. Um, so that's the overall specs. But again, how does that compare to the previous generation Spider-Man game? Well, in the previous game, 720p 30 very low was a GTX 950. Um, wow, that's actually a pretty big uh, step down, I think. Let's go ahead and take a look, actually. Wait, wh where is a 1650 on here? We gotta get back to the 1650. Um, so if we're we're back to the 1650 here, let's take a look at the 950. Do we have a 950, guys? Yeah, 960 is even weaker than a 1650, and the 950 is going to be uh, uh, only offering 60% of the performance of a 1650. So what we're seeing there is that there is a pretty meaningful step up in what they're asking for the absolute base. So if your PC was just barely uh, getting by in the first Spider-Man PC uh, remastered game, you're probably going to have a bit of a hard time here. And for 1080p 60 at medium settings, uh, they're jumping up from a 1060 uh, request or RX 580 from AMD uh, up to, again, now they're asking for a 3060. There is a pretty hefty jump from a uh, 1060 to a 3060. If we go ahead and take a look at what that jump actually looks like, Let's t check it out here real quick. So if we go to the 1060, uh, so here's our 1060 set as our baseline. Uh, then again, we scroll up and you can see that the 3060 uh, is about 84% more powerful, so almost twice as powerful. So I'm wondering if that means that the 1080, that, that like the 1066 gigabyte, you know, is, uh, uh, gonna uh, struggle a bit here um, as, as a baseline. Like, like would we cut our performance in half-ish? So maybe it's gonna be like 1080p 30 FPS medium. And is six gigabytes of VRAM gonna be enough for the medium settings? That's always a question mark. Anyway, that's what I've got for you guys today. This video will be being published, you know, the night before the game launches. I may or may not have time to benchmark the game myself. Let me know how much you care in the comment section because I'm also working on a bunch of 5080 review content and all of that. Hope all of you have an excellent day.